Oh, the God. I just want to pray right now. This is probably the hardest year of my life. But... Uh, lived out the Bible. Youth, but the, I remember the times that I did say yes. And it's not about yourself, it's about others. But God demonstrates his own love for us. And he is worthy. And that was a big deal. I want it to be that Jesus will meet you wherever you are. Then I've got to be okay with who I am. Yes, hey guys. Put your nets down, leave your boats, and come follow me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Real Talk. It's the segment where we slow things down and say, hey, let's just be real. Thanks for being with me here today. It's always a joy and pleasure hanging out with you all. I'm so excited to be with you. Let's start. In 2009, Disney Pixar released an animated movie about a boy and a girl who become friends and they fall in love and get married. Oh, they grow old together, but unfortunately the woman Ellie gets sick and dies. All this happens in the first 10 minutes of the movie, so I'm not really spoiling anything if you haven't seen it. The rest of the movie tells the story of the man, Carl, trying to accomplish the couple's shared dreams of going on an adventure to South America. They had tried saving and planning, and although Carl and Ellie had hopes for this adventure of a lifetime, sadly they did not experience it together. The movie, of course, is up. And it has won two Academy Awards, has grossed over a billion dollars Australian dollars that is and it's a great movie you know like a real great story but one thing that stands out to me though is Ellie and Carl had plans for their life but they weren't able to achieve them together you know I wonder what kind of life you're hoping for what are your dreams and your plans for the life ahead of you like starting right now and going on into the future what kind of life do you want for yourself you know, I think it's actually important we ask ourselves these questions and actually take some time to think deeply through the answers to these questions. What do you want in life? Perhaps a better question might be, what does a fulfilled life look like? I mean, how would you even go about answering a question like that? I believe the Bible has significant answers to many, many questions, and it has answers specifically to questions like these. What is a fulfilled life? There's a scene in the Bible which was written down by one of Jesus' best friends, John. So let me lay it out for you. Jesus is talking with a range of people around him, a crowd. Some are his disciples. That means his loyal followers and close friends. And some are just randoms who are kind of interested in what he has to say. They've heard some things about Jesus that have sparked an interest and curiosity. So they're there to get the latest experience or story. Within the crowd is a man who was previously blind but had been healed by Jesus a few days earlier. He was able to see and even though he was actually born blind, Jesus had healed him. Jesus had spat in the mud, in the ground, made some mud, put the mud on the guy's eyes and completely healed him. He could now see. There was also some other dudes in the crowd and these guys really hated Jesus. They were highly religious and were in fact the teachers of the law, which was kind of like the priests. And they mostly lived and worked around the temple and they thought that Jesus was bad news. They thought that Jesus had broken their rules and they actually wanted to kill Jesus and were looking for a way to kill him legally so they wouldn't get in trouble for it. Now, Jesus was a pretty good dude, right? Like, I mean, most people believe Jesus was at least a good guy, whether or not they believed everything he taught. And I, I kind of wonder, what do you, what's your understanding of Jesus? I mean, if you were in that crowd... Which group of people would you be in? Would you be a loyal follower, standing there with the other loyal followers? Would you be the random person keen to hear something about Jesus that would perhaps turn you into a loyal follower? I mean, perhaps you even see Jesus as some in insignificant guy, so probably wouldn't be in the crowd to start with. And, you know, that's okay. Whatever the case, let me encourage you that what Jesus says and does 
has real significance even in the lives of people today, including my own. So what has got the fancy pants religious guys all fired up and triggered at Jesus? And Jesus was speaking to a crowd of different groups and he was about to say something that would change the course of history forever. But it was what Jesus had done earlier that got these guys fuming. Basically, Jesus had gone into the temple where they were hanging out, told all these fancy religious guys in there that the only way to receive blessings from God was through himself, Jesus. Jesus told them that they were wrong, that they were liars, that they were not part of God's family. They get nothing. They inherit nothing. So yeah, they weren't that happy with Jesus. Now, if any random person walked into the temple at that time and said, um, excuse me, you guys are all wrong and liars and God doesn't like what you're doing, they would be dismissed and thrown out, essentially ignored. And yeah, it's easy to ignore a random dude. The problem for these religious guys is what Jesus had done previously and what Jesus was about to do. He wasn't some random guy. After Jesus rips into those guys, he walks into the temple, he walks out of the temple and heals a guy blind from birth, our friend from the crowd earlier. That kind of thing can't be ignored, right? Jesus wasn't a guy that floated in and out. He had healed many people. He had fed thousands from a loaf of bread and he had just recently walked on water and now he comes into the temple and claims that he is God and the fancy religious guys were wrong and in trouble. They were cut out of God's will. They were not going to be a part of God's kingdom. I'd imagine you'd be pretty upset too if you had set a plan for your life that included years and years of study and discipline combined with politics and rules upon rules, only to be told that all you were doing and the plans you had set for the li your life were wrong and you were not right with God. I mean, yeah, your life goals and plans had just become meaningless. And that was what Jesus was saying. The thing about that, though, was that Jesus was right. He knew what God wanted. He knew the truth. And in fact, they were wrong. So, what was it that Jesus said to the crowd I described earlier? As he stood there amongst his friends and his enemies and some randos, the thing that changed the world was this. Let me read it to you from John chapter 10, verse 7. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus gives us some great wisdom to take on board here. Verse 7 and 8. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All before were thieves and robbers, but the sheep ignored them. When Jesus starts a sentence with, I tell you the, tru in the truth, you know that what Jesus is about to say is really significant. It's like his way of highlighting the next thing he's about to say. It's actually really helpful to the listener then and helpful to us now. Jesus says, underlined, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate for the sheep. All those who came before were thieves. I love this. It gets me so, so pumped up. What is he saying? It may not seem very significant and it may seem like a little odd and cryptic. I am a gate question mark. But Jesus is making a huge claim here and they understood that. See, Jesus is saying that he has exclusive rights to grant entry into this sheep pen. And this sheep pen is God's family. It is the kingdom of God. 
he's saying that the only way through Jesus, the only way that we can enter the family of God and enter into God's kingdom is through Jesus. Any other way will rob you of your life. We're in danger of being like these fancy religious guys as we try and entering the good life through our own ways. We aim for a fulfilled life by our own thoughts and by our own wisdom and our own plans. Are we open to hearing what Jesus is saying? Because although Jesus lived a while ago and this was written back then, and it's still relevant, just as relevant as it was back then to us now. Are we open to hearing that truth? The truth that Jesus has highlighted and underlined for us. Jesus gives us a promise, a fulfilled life. Verses 9 to 10. I am the gate. All who enter through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus repeats his claim as the greatest gate of all time. He is the G-goat, the greatest gate of all time. Anyone, you or me as well, anyone who puts their life in Jesus' hands will be saved. When we come to Jesus, the gate, or the greatest gate, we're received into God's family, the sheep pen, and then we go out into the world with that life and with God's blessing. The religious guys hearing this from Jesus, as I was saying before, they didn't believe it. They knew about Jesus' power, his power to heal and make food and walk on water, but they chose their own life plans They rejected Jesus' claim that he was the only way into God's family. How will you respond to these words of Jesus? Jesus is offering us something quite unique. He's offering us relationship and he's offering us fullness of life. That was Jesus' main reason for coming to earth. The crowd heard these claims of Jesus and heard his unique offer. At the start, I asked you, what are your hopes and plans for your life? And I urge you to think what a fulfilled life looks like. Jesus offers us life, and not just any life, life in abundance. He invites us to be part of his family by simply coming to him, the greatest gate of all time. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the source, of a fulfilled life. You know, this is applicable to everyone, whether you've never come to Jesus before, um, or if you've come to Jesus before and you just need refreshing or renewing in your relationship, the invitation is there. I go to Jesus every day. Go to Jesus and be received into God's family, ready to live a fulfilled life. Bless you.